All right, three, two, one. All right, everybody. We got, we got another returning guest, Kenny Shaw. I mean, it feels like it's been, uh, well, your like, second time in the last month or so, Kenny, but former 2013 national champion, Kenny Shaw is with us this evening. We got a lot to talk about. All of us were just at the first inaugural Raw camp that Kenny Shaw hosted down in Orlando. A huge success, a lot of a lot of publicity. I can't wait to discuss it with the guys. But Kenny, good evening. Happy Saturday night. How you doing, man? Man, I'm good. Thanks for having me. And um, go nose. Yeah, man. That that I gotta say. First off, I do want to thank you for inviting us to come down there and cover. I I I was pretty i would say coming out of it i thought it from my point of everything it was a huge success for you and actually having a Mm -hmm. lot of kids come through but what is your first initial reaction because you had a speech afterwards at the camp and you said i'm not gonna cry now but i'm probably gonna get a little bit emotional (laughs) later away from you all but what was your just first take of the camp did you think everything went pretty smooth like you expect like you were expecting man you know um it didn't really hit me until till that following Tuesday, mm-hmm. which, it, which it was, um, I say that because, um, you know, I, um, I, I came out of the camp, um, didn't hop on social media, didn't, I just, uh, took everything in and, you know, um, Bojack said at the end of the camp, you know, just go, just go and um, take it all in, in the quiet place, you know, just thank the Lord because, you know, Cause he he saw it. He'd been doing camps for twenty years. This was my first one. Um, I didn't really know how to feel right after, cause you know that's how a lot of first start. But um, like I said, Tuesday I hopped online and it was just a lot of traction. It was a lot of um, been to camps a long time. I haven't seen one like this. It was a lot of um, shoot. My old teammates hit me up like, man can we do this every year? You know, like we, they were acting like little kids. And I was like, dang, like what, what, what happened Saturday? Um, so, you know, as I'm talking to you guys on the Saturday, it was like, man, um, it was a, it was a special event for everybody. Um, the kids, um, to you guys, it was a special event for the parents. It, you know, it, I don't know if somebody, I don't know if I'm just, I'm that mellow, but it's just, I'm, it probably hasn't hit me as much as it should have right now mm-hmm. as, it, as probably leading to the next one for the second one. So. Yeah, no, I mean, if you think about it, we were showing up and we were about, what was that, 7.45 in the morning and looking in the yeah. stands, seeing all the kids there and smiles. And actually, you know, throughout the whole camp, we'll get into it, but you've got, let's talk about you, your coaches that you have the, uh, the lineup. I mean, <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. We were talking with guys after the camp, like they'd never seen this before. You know, you've got all of this yeah. talent, NFL talent trainers involved, CFL guys. I mean, pros everywhere that are there one-on-one uh, with the players. I mean, you've got Jameis, you've got Dak Prescott one-on-one with players. They never touched their phone throughout the whole camp. The only reason Jameis was touching his phone is because he had to get his his uh, lineup all set up and his plays ready for whenever he was going on uh, the seven-on-seven seven with Dak's other team. But it was yeah. just, you know, these these players, you know, you got Wilder, you got Los yelling at er- everybody. He might have had a little yelling at some of the kids. Uh, but – <laughs> it was just the, the kind of, that kind of interaction you don't get a lot at other camps. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's something that I thought was really unique with this one. I think you you know, you know, can talk a little bit about it, but the coaches coming in and really performing like that I think was really special. And it goes to show how much they care about you and wanting to help you out, I think. You know, that just shows how the bond that you have with the, all of these guys. I mean, they're all over the place around the whole country. Jameis flew from – uh, California to attend it just shows a testament to you as a person along with you know being a former teammate of these guys yeah I mean um like I say afterwards that's why I don't know if you saw I, I had to get them a little gift so everything was um everything was calculated um now what was that gift got, what was that gift again because I got to see um, it I don't know if the listeners got to see hey man it. <laughs> hey Kenny 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 <laughs> We, hey, Kenny Shaw has always been a guy that was so loved. And Kenny really did show love and appreciation. If I know one thing, if 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 you do something for Kenny and he and he asks you to do it, 
and and you do it for him, he's going to have great appreciation. Kenny gifted us with a bottle of champagne and, and a nice cigar, man. And 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 I don't really smoke cigars. I don't really drink champagne, but I sent. We're getting Kenny older. We're getting our, older. <laughs> yeah, I, I I sent I sent I sent our, our 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 whole group a message like, man, you know how good it feels to sit back and just sip on some champagne and smoke a cigar after a great weekend with your boys. Like it wasn't, and, and the camp was. And, and you talked about just watching us, the energy. We were kids. I ain't seen yeah. KB in years. I didn't know yeah. KB lived, lived where he lived. I didn't know Timmy was in the local like that. It's just like you see these guys, and I, for a fan now, football, I've been watching my, my boys develop their KB. game and grow. I watched Timmy become a household name in Philly before he got down to Jackson. But like, you know what I'm saying? I watched them become Timmy Ocho in the league. And so it's just crazy. Um, getting to spend time with them all over again and watching them, their families growing. Like Kenny said, we're getting older, so we're appreciating, um, you know, getting together when we can. And that's really what it was. It was a nice reunion. Yeah. And speaking about, you know, the family reunion out there, you know, we heard it from you, Kenny. We heard it from Lowe's, James Wilder, Freddie Stevenson, so many guys on that 2013 team. They were mm -hmm. saying that Saturday was, you know, the first time you had had so many guys – from that team together since the night you won the national championship. So what was it like, you know, just being back out there on the field around the guys? I know Lowe's kind of talked about it a little bit. Man, it, like I said, um, as the camp was approaching eight o'clock and seeing first saw the guys so punctual, they so ready to go. They got the script. It, they saw the script and, and they saw the energy that they would have to produce with the script. And, um, it was special because it, it was like a college space script, but it was a little fun, but it, they was going to work. And I think, um, like I said, when we all got together, um, I think they then realized too that you don't even have to be a Seminole to be welcome in our, in our family. And that's, that's a football fraternity at the end of the day. And, um, Man, like I say, afterwards, I was getting calls from the OG Seminole players. Like, man, hey, I see y'all doing it. Hey, we, can, I, can we come next year? So, you know. Wow. The, sec the second annual going to be. It's gonna, I, I, I think that and that's the part that kind of hit me first was getting the calls from the OGs. Like, man, y'all got together. Um. I wish we would have been did this with our class, but you know, you kind of setting it up. So, I mean, in Orlando neutral, we, it, you can treat it so in so many type of, um, you can treat it as reunion. You can treat it as a boys get together. It can be whatever, but it's good to see one another because, you know, life happens year round, but once we get together, it's like everything, everything is, is blinded. Everything stopped. Yeah, that day lasted forever. If it, it, it felt like it felt like that, yeah. it felt like the day lasted forever. Oh, and it, then it kind of did. I got home five a.m. Then we texted and talked, yeah. and then the talk, and then and then Devonte sent us a message. Like he didn't send Kenny. Yeah. He sent us a message. Like, hey, first one shout out to Kenny, but then, hey man, shout out to y'all boys really getting together. Like, yeah. It's hard, like understand. Everybody lives a life, and a lot of and, and and some of us aren't playing football. So you know, you have guys in off season off season training, really really hard. Kenny's a teacher now in off season training, getting ready to go play in the CFL. So your schedule is rigorous. You got to schedule a time for a camp, organize it this way, have guys fly in, make sure guys are on time, and then as your teammate, I want I want to show up on time. I want to be there punctual. I want to be there ready. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. to have everybody ready there, oh, that's beautiful, man. You can't you can't ask for nothing better than that. You can't the the amount of energy. So you a lot of people weren't following our coverage there, and anybody else's. They, you had a early uh, morning camp for the youngins, and then you had a second mm -hmm. part of the day for older older guys. What was the age group for the second uh, part of the day? Second was um. So if you was in eighth grade to twelfth, eighth to twelfth. Okay, yeah. And the one thing that I noticed, and I think we talked about with Los afterwards, and some of the guys mm -hmm. is. These kids were really there listening. I mean, they were really. Oh, yeah. I, I've never, I, I, you know, not too much playing around. I mean, I love that they were having a good time. They had a DJ there playing yeah. music. It was just good vibes throughout it all. But these kids were really mm -hmm. listening to you guys, and I, it was fun being able to document that because you know that, that's so huge for them to be around 
role models and be able to talk with them just about little things. And I know, mm-hmm. um, you know, a few of you guys had speeches afterwards and y'all were telling them, you know, come, come ask a question to some of these guys. Cause they'll give you some good advice. Think about one question that you guys can discuss with Jameis Dak. Uh, Timmy was gone, <laughs> uh, yeah. but Kelvin Benjamin, all that talent there. Uh, it, it just, they were, they were really connected and listen. Did you see that too, Kenny, where they were really listening in to you guys and, you know, yeah, they they was they was they was honed in and um like I say um bits and bits and pieces of that um I noticed as I as we was wrapping up the camp like that whole day was already written like um I had a good group of guys who on Saturdays I do training sessions and they I wasn't in the coach mode I am on Saturdays because it was supposed to be a fun event but they know how I get down with um, cause I tell them each time, be, be a better listener. Cause you, you get, you get further in this game, just listening more than thinking you can do it all thinking, you know, it all it's, it's, it's more than what, what you can just do. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta sit back and take it all in because you know, these kids, they, um, they got access to a lot of more stuff than we do. Like they got Instagram, they got a lot of teachers around and it's like who do you listen to because we didn't have no camps like this we didn't we didn't have half the stuff they have so it's hard for them to take in who's really genuine who's got the best interest for them and but you saw like you said you you kind of peep the kids like really listening like not really no joking around it was it was business Mm -hmm. no I wonder, you know, you have – obviously you said you want to do a second camp. Have you thought about any ways of doing two a year? You think this is kind of just set on one? I know you do training all throughout the year. You do your own personal Oh, man, training. hey. <laughs> so, I, so, hey, I, I write a lot of stuff in my notes. That's um, that's that's a lot of my – as I got older, that's what I do now. But um, got some ideas brewing up, like I said um, – to the guys i know our 2023 reunion coming up so definitely got something already brewing for the end um but um i already some 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 person in um a calorie reach out and do a camp and i like what kind of camp you want to do he like i like the one that was thrown at dr phillips i'm like oh <laughs> that that's the once a year type thing you know what i mean but yeah. um so to answer your question i don't really know i'm just um I'm in just the um, mode of flowing right now, like um, setting up LLCs and all that good stuff because, you know, it's it's becoming a thing. Like I say, it hasn't hit me yet until my team around me, and that's that's what I had to listen to moving forward is um, being a better listener and just making the moves that I need to make. Like, like I say, the LLC, like definitely after the camp because – I would be kind of pissed off if, if it was taken, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that, you probably need to get that taken care of uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> Did you – how would – you know, the, man, the uh, media was just blown out of the water there. I mean, it was everywhere yeah. across – it didn't even like – during that day, yeah, but, I mean, throughout the, this whole last week, yeah. it was everywhere. What, what was your reaction to that because, what, CBS you, I Sports? Didn't, I didn't uh, – <laughs> I mean, it went everywhere. I, it went national. Yeah, on, honestly, um, you know, we got a lot. Of, we got a, the, the, the good thing about um, life sometimes is you get a taste of it already early in life. And um, once it comes back again, it rolls back around. It's like, okay, that that is cool. Now, um, I just got to stick to um, my motives, and that's just getting the kids somewhere, just getting them um, a new train of thought that no matter what, it's going on. They, they young life, like they can make it in this, in this game and they, they don't have to do it alone. You know what I mean? So, um, seeing all the traction behind it was, it felt good. It, it was, um, I eventually knew it would come out, but not how it came out. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Like it was like, um, the Ryan guy you met, he, he was sending me all the stuff because it, like I said, I'm not, I'm not tech savvy like that, but he kind of was shooting me. Oh, it's on this. Um, this guy do it. 
I'm like, I don't even know who the hell this is, but you know, <laughs> but it, it was good. Um, it was a good, um, it was just a good showcase for a special weekend, which, which we deserved. Yeah, no, it worked out perfectly. What was uh, your favorite part of the camp? Was there anything it could have been your interaction with the, uh, with the former teammates? Uh, I know I saw you and Dak Hello, sh- hey, messing around. Logan, I don't know if we can add in what was going on after the camp. That's, that's but... what I'm saying. I don't have a favorite part because, you know, like I said, I got in, I got in 5 a.m. Um, it was, it was, it was no favorite part. It was a lot of laughs, a lot of love and, a lot of just, it's like we jump back in time mm-hmm. and we're just all hanging out again. Yeah. Dak, Dak Prescott was there to the entire time, both, uh, <laughs> both parts of the day along with Jameis. But what was it like having those two NFL quarterbacks? Jam mm-hmm. a big Jameis guy. So he's a, he's going to be the starter for the saints unless Sean P- Payton's stupid. Um, yeah. <laughs> but he also needs to unblock me on Twitter. Anyways, but you have two starting, say, NFL mm-hmm. quarterbacks. How about having those two guys there the whole time, one-on-one with with kids some of the times? Like, uh, it's just kind of a – you don't really get a chance like that anymore nowadays, I feel like. And I know with – yeah, uh, you know, it, it's just very rare to have that opportunity. Yeah, it, it's very rare, and I, I kind of felt a little bad for the kids because they get – um. They get filtered in a route now to go to what looks good instead of what's right for them. Because um, I don't know if you know, it was like two other camps going on. You had mm-hmm. a couple of um, Under Armour ESPN events, and and a lot of kids afterwards like, man, damn, like I I wish I would have went. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I this is how it was gonna go, and and I get it because you know you never know at first and the ones who was there was like, Hey, you missed the show. And I just feel like, um, just having those two guys there really, really went to go to show that in this football world, they respect me to the point to be there on time all day, you know, eight, eight to three is a long day for anybody. And for those two to be there, um, upbeat, they actually was competing all day, which I found out at the end. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but it, 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 like I say, my whole goal is to have a kid to just leave out of there and be like, man, hey, I got to crank my game up. I, I can make it. Just the just being around a guy. All it takes sometimes is a high five. Sometimes. Mhm. Yeah. No, it, it can change. It can change which is what you sometimes. get a lot. Yeah, which is what you get a lot with you have some NFL guys at camps. It's, it's a lot of maybe sitting around, you know, high fives and stuff. But these guys was actually like looking at some of the footage. It, it's it's funny, and that's the one thing I haven't seen all the footage because it's so much. But it's some funny, it's some funny ass shit. Like just yeah, those guys. Yeah, we're gonna get they that money's too. worth. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get that money's worth. I tell yeah. parents that all the time. And I know there was though, I think it came back from my mom and, and, and my mom, and it was crazy. My mother raised us like this. Hey, I, I don't make enough money for y'all boys to get a, uh, to go to school, to pay for y'all go to school. You gotta mm-hmm. go get a scholarship. So every time we stepped out to a camp, we paid attention. We listened, we just went hard. And so I always yeah. made sure I wanted to get my mother's money's worth. If my mama gonna send me to a camp, if my mama yeah. gonna send me on a field Got trip, I'm, I'm gonna behave. I'm, I'm gonna listen to everything. I'm gonna come back with all the information I can tell her because I'm going to get my mama's money, money's worth. So I always tell, tell the parents, hey, you send your kid out here with me, you're going to get your money's worth. Mm-hmm. Your kid going to come it. back with, hey, I got new drills or I got a new technique or I know how to do this better, do that better because that that's when the growing and that's when that's when you make the real connection. That's why you hold mm-hmm. the camp to make yeah. that connection. That connection right there. When that kid leaves the camp and says, I learned I know how to do this better. I have improved. Then you start to change lives. And that's the reason why you do it. You mm-hmm. mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's why you show up at eight o'clock on time. That's why you show up with that card in your hand and you're ready to go because you were that kid at some point in time. You, you wanted somebody that was important to you, like that right. sat on a level where you want to be one day to coach you hard and to really give you true instruction. 
I mean, you don't want nobody out there like like a days ago. Oh, that, oh, it's okay. And, yeah. You no, know, you don't want that. That's not really no. I mean, what inspiration could you really be doing that to a kid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you don't grow, you don't grow as no adult like that. No, you want to give that kid the same passion you would want if you were that child because that was that's gonna make that child go hard work hard yeah. go listen pay attention and then that's when the work begins and that's when that development begins in that kid why mm -hmm. did they listen so well because we we're giving great instruction every kid got better mm -hmm. yeah every kid got better because they wanted to get better they seen the coaches do it right they see other players do it right and they wanted to do it right and that led to better development and that's where it starts at and i'm i was happy to be a part of it man that shit was amazing <laughs> well yeah. i appreciate you there no, that was amazing. Dog. I, I had, there was some. There was a plenty of moments where I had chills because, like I was saying, the, these kids were in love with you guys and just the extra. I mean, they right off the bat, they're not looking for pictures and all that. Afterwards, of course, they were able to hang out and get pictures, but they were really there, key keyed in on your guys's advice and listening. And it was so awesome. I have a few videos of Kelvin Benjamin going against PJ Williams and they both had their own player going against one another. I know Los was on the other side cause James's uh, yeah. team was on the other side and they were going at it, but it goes, so oh, y'all, y'all's yeah. competitive, y'all's competitive energy brought down to the kids that y'all had picked to go against one another. Yeah. And it just, Imagine our practices. That's what I'm oh, saying. <laughs> boy. Hey. Oh man. Oh no, Carlos! I, I'm pretty sure I have a video of Carlos slapping the ground. He was so hyped up about this. Next Los was knocking up. kids over. <laughs> hey man, Los, listen. Los what? <laughs> listen, running back. Los hey, knocking, I bet him and Wild. Hey, him and Wild was knocking kids over. They were. Yeah, I got yeah, the video. Just bang, bang. Better spin out the tackle, man. Spin out the tackle. Spin out the tackle. <laughs> they just run into the dummy. Well, I'm just gonna give y'all a little more shoulder. I bought one of them. Hey, I had to pick him. His mama was looking. Right. I had to stop recording. <laughs> you had to delete that you video. You hit my baby with that dummy. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, man. Who was somebody, and Los could also speak on this too, who was somebody that y'all haven't seen in a long time? I saw, I love seeing Nick O'Leary there. I haven't seen him in so long, but he looks in really great shape. I, he was yeah. telling us there's some things that, you know, we'll keep there that we got to discuss, right. but he looks in some really good shape. And uh, obviously I haven't seen Kellen Benjamin in so long, but who are some guys that y'all personally haven't seen in a minute? Um, so KB, he stays in Orlando. I've seen him. Um, mm -hmm. Cam Irving. Yeah. Um, the Panthers haven't now. seen, o I've seen O'Leary. I've been down in Jupiter within the couple of years, but it's, it's a couple guys that was like, dang, I ain't seen you since 2013. <laughs> like I, Telvin is one Timmy. Yeah. Um, got it. And the thing is, Logan, it was, it had to be more than 10 guys messaged me. I saw it late. It was like, man, I had to do something with a contract or they, something happened that they couldn't make it. So it was like at least 10 people who didn't show up that already, they already asked him about next year. So, which we mentioned with Freeman and, and all that, but I haven't seen Will Ty. Oh, yeah. I ain't seen Chill in so long. Yeah. It's good to see Chill. Like I haven't mm -hmm. seen him since. That's good seen vibes. Him since he transferred. That's good vibes. Like that's yeah. Chill is good vibes. Like, yeah. Who's Chill? You gotta, to you gotta tell chill. listeners. Will Ty. Will oh, Ty. Okay. Oh, Will Ty. We call yeah. him Chill. Man, he from man, he from up north. When we first came down, you know, we wasn't used to that big bulky tight end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and he looked like a linebacker. He looked like Holmes. No, he's a big boy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Big Christian guy. Holmes and Tyler, like huge linebackers. And, and he just brought a different element to the game. He went to Stony Brook that fit, his, that fit his style of play. And, I mean, he's been in the league since then, been successful. But, man, we missed that energy because he just was laid yeah. back, cool, no drama. Like, just, hey, y'all need to calm yeah. down, man. Like, he ain't even like that. It's too hot outside for that. Like, he was good vibes. So, it was real good to see him, man. Yeah. I love seeing Nick O'Leary. Go ahead, Dustin, will you say something? Yeah, I was going to say, and Kenny, you know, you brought up Telvin, and he was able to show up for the afternoon yeah. portion. Yeah, It yeah. was fun to watch him at work, but I think the best moment, you know, was afterwards whenever he walked up to speak with the campers, and he gave that speech to the rest of you guys, and, you know, all you guys repeated it back. What was it again, Logan? Huh? You made the video. Oh, yeah. Was oh, the fight for, for it's a fight other. for each other. Yeah. 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 Hey. That, that was, that was, that was. That sent you guys back to eight years ago? <laughs> man, that now you a... see why we was kicking, now you see why we were kicking ass, man. We was, we was competitive. We had a camaraderie like no other. It was just something too deep 
to beat us. You weren't going to beat us because we, we don't been through so much that year, like as a team on the field and off the field, we don't been through so much. And it was like, and we got some talent. Oh man. We, and just hearing that speech and that, um, that fight song he did was like, dang, I ain't heard that in a minute. <laughs> we, we, I just banging on the lockers, you know, that's how Crunky got after the, all that. And it was just, mm-hmm. it was good because, you know, like I say, we we all don't been through our life after college. We all don't had our ups and downs. And um, like I say, I got a call from Willie Halstead. I haven't seen Willie Halstead in years. And Willie was like, "Man, I don't I don't mean to come off like this, but like I ain't I hated football the past five years. Like like that camp made me love football again. Like I'm I'm back in it now. And just hearing stuff like that from grown men, it's like Man, hell yeah! I gotta keep it up. This can't—I I can't do one. I can't do one of these and just go ghost now. You know what I mean? Contest this that. Be- I can contest to that because I seen KB, and me and KB's yeah. story is story is kind of similar with having success but not being around the right nucleus of a team at a time, and yeah, then yeah. going to a place that's very tough to sustain. Because I went to Pittsburgh, and that's a tough organization to be in. Very strict. Definitely. You went to Buffalo, and they're hard to please. Like they—they they hold you to a certain oh. standard. And, and they fans are super fans. Yes, they're hard fans. And yeah. so, and, and when he seen me, he was like, Los, hey, how, how much you weigh? You looking good? I'm like, bro, I'm at playing weight. Like, I'm ready to go play football. He was like, man, okay, it's back on. Like, I'm back in. Like, my, my, yeah. my head different. My head space different. And you can tell that, you know, my head space went away from football for a while. And it took me seeing Kenny going to Canada. I see Rodney go to Canada. I see James mm-hmm. eating in Canada. I'm like, oh, my boy, Lee, oh, I can go. I can play. Like, yeah. my boys are going to play. They're achieving that same goal that I still have. Now I can go do it. Like, my boys are doing it. Definitely. I'm going to get on my ground and go do it. And sometimes you need to see your guys. Like, you don't need to see, like, you know, uh, 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 you need to see your guys. And that team yeah. is the team of your guys. Like, it's hard to explain, man. I can't even find the words to It's just those, your people. Not nah, definitely. Hmm. Yeah. No, I was – it, it was just great being able to see Telvin out there, man, because he, when he showed up, he was ready to get after. He had gloves oh, on. He put on his cleats <laughs> and all. <laughs> he, uh, he brings man, a different funny. energy. He this brings man, a different funny, energy. Man. Oh, he's hilarious. <laughs> he was getting into, he was getting in some of the campus face trying to guard him. That's that's just how he would do it too. Like, so like I say, my practice is, hey, it'll either be nice or it'll be. I'm finna kick your ass right now because you in front of me and and we gotta make it entertaining. That was a yeah. few that was a few of the guys out there. I mean, I feel like KB wanted to run around, but he was like, I don't know if I'm in shape yet to do that. And then also yeah, hey. PJ was locking up. I know uh God, who else was it? That was out there. Tony Carter yeah, was Tony, out there. Yeah, Tony <laughs> Carter was also out there, and he's always been great with kids and camps yeah. and such. Um, Love TC. Yeah. Love him, yeah. TC, like, I mentioned him at the end with that Tom Shaw. Like, he, he – they kind of paved the way, like, a yeah. uh, vision of eventually where it's going to take all this to because, you know, you listen to the OGs. You don't be knowing it until you get older. Like, dang, I remember that, like. That be nice to people. Tom Shaw said that every day <laughs> when we left. Like he said, "Hey, people. listen." And this is how he said it. He said, "Hey, Carlos, you never know who you're gonna meet. So you yeah. shake their hand, be respectful, and you always be nice to people." He said he didn't say who. He said people, point blank, yeah. period. And that take you. And then, okay, you ever heard this one? Live like nobody else, so you can live like nobody else. I never heard that one, but he used to. He, hey, he, he used to hit he, me he and Vince with that one. He gave some gems. He used to hit me and Vince with that. He said, "Hey boys, <laughs> y'all, y'all need to live y'all like nobody Vince. else." That's why I so said now. Live. Now, um, Logan, all you guys, I just got to come up with a time that it works for everyone. Which mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm gonna orchestrate it um, because, like I say, Vince didn't, didn't come, but it was it was a lot of players who wanted to be there, but it didn't work out for them. You know, mm-hmm. it was Sammy Watt, and they all apologized. I'm like. Terrence Brooks, um, Sammy Watkins, y'all, y'all, don't apologize, man. It's all love, regardless. I know that next one. Now that y'all know, is is up and running. It's so the next one is gonna be even better. Yeah, they're gonna have to get y'all escorts to get into the place. It's gonna be it's gonna be popping. It was already packed. 
I remember when we first were getting there in the morning and watching Jameis slide in, and y'all were introducing yourselves to the campers, I believe, at the time. But Jameis rolled in and was able to see y'all and how hyped he was. He came up to KB and said, man, they got everybody here. Kenny got everybody here. They were, like, hugging each other. I feel like they haven't seen each other in so long. And it was just such a surreal moment to see because we were expecting this to be really a reunion for you guys, too, on the second part of it because, I mean – so, I mean, the brotherhood is, is something different, and it just hits differently, definitely when you play football, and y'all, y'all are on different career paths and everything, but that for the amount of people that, amount of coaches that were still there, it was just incredible just to be a viewer, you know, being able to cover it, it was extremely special, the whole weekend overall, too. And it seemed like you had, you had great help around you, too. The DJ, I like the DJ situation going on yeah. there. I mean, man, Cam hey, Irving's trying to dance. <laughs> Cam Irving's trying to dance. <laughs> man, Logan, everybody was connected in one way or another. And that was the special part about it. Like, that DJ was a um, – he was a cornerback when I came into high school. He was a he was a senior, and I was a freshman. And he was, he was always, like, one of those smart corners. He wasn't super aggressive, but – he played ball with me back in the day, so I saw him going into his DJ life the past few years, and, and I said, man, hey, I'm throwing my first camp at our old stomping grounds, and I want you on board, and, you know, that's how that came about. So everybody was connected in one way, and like you uh, kind of mentioned just now, like a good team around you is, is good, and Carlos kind of touched on it too. It's like you, you feel better moving forward in life when you got the right people around you motivating you just you know all that yeah i'm trying to think anything do you have anything else los or delu from the camp i'm trying to think of my my it was obviously that tullin smith speech (laughs) brought in chills there it was nice seeing uh, (laughs) nico leary on the jug machine there launching balls at kids and (laughs) telling kids to put the balls in the basket put the dang balls in the basket (laughs) Oh my God! I love Nick. Nick he just keeps he literally. That's that's just Nick O'Leary though. He Nick's keeps a ball buster. He's a ball buster. He just does his own Nick thing. Is Nick. <laughs> Nick is Nick, and I I love Dumar. Dumar is like yeah. y'all don't understand how funny this man is. <laughs> Phil Dumar. He is yeah. a let. He, listen, he's a living yeah. legend in these streets yeah. of Tallahassee. <laughs> yes, they, they need to build him a statue on Tennessee no, Street. No, Phil Dumar is. <laughs> Bro, he's a legend. Go. Yeah, goaded. He's goaded, man. He's goaded in the streets of Tallahassee, man. <laughs> no, but, but my, it favorite, was... my favorite part of the camp, honestly, was um when watching the kids really listen, though. And like I'm setting up drills, and as I'm setting up drills, you know, you got like, you know, you would think, you know, having your boys around, it would be a lot of talking, a lot of no, man. Freddie was on one kid. We had uh Brandon on another kid, James was on another kid. And as I'm setting up drills, Chop them up. Y'all boys ain't moving. Okay, I guess we're on the same. And it, it was great I to see. I did see y'all doing up down. Oh, my God. I, man, hey, I, I saw that. Hey, we're going to get them. We're going to get them. Because after that happened, though, the kids turn up. Okay, the coaches are into it. And now, like I said it before, then they got into it. And that was kind of stuff you look for when, when I mean, I, that's what I love about coaching, man. That's why you do it. Yeah. Because you want to get the enthusiasm out of them. And then little kids give you the energy, though. Like little kids, they're going to give you the energy. If you give it to them, they will give it right back to you. As crunk as yeah. you get, they'll get as crunk as you get. And it's pretty cool, man. The little kid with SpongeBob cleats. Oh, <laughs> hey, they already trying to recruit him at Dollar Bill. I said, hey, hey enjoy. He got feet. No, he, 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 and that's the thing, too. You got to um, kind of tell the young kids, like, hey, just keep it up, move the right way. And yes, because it's easily, how many, how many times have you seen a kid so good and he just reaches peak so early because you never see him again, all though. around him? You never see him again. Yeah, and it and it's so it's like that's what makes people like us just mm-hmm. keep them keep them hungry, keep them like I I, I believe in giving them a dap or something, but I also believe giving them that nickel lyric treatment, like put them in the bag, get, you know, just <laughs> yeah, Pretty hard on them. Up yeah, downs, man, give to. me quick, some quick up downs, man. Well, that's, Bill's character. Well, I mean, you you 
teach them like how what y'all went through, and that's some um, KB was telling. Uh, we ain't walking. You better get to running right now. We ain't walking. We ain't walking. It just goes to show oh, how man. things have trickled down from your time with Jimbo and the staff there, and you know how it trickles down mm-hmm. to your guys is coaching and training and teaching and listening and different things of that nature. It trickles down to you know your time all together at FSU, even in high school, but. Definitely an FSU under Jimbo Fisher and how things were ran and, and drills, practices, organization, et cetera. You know, wasn't so easy going under Jimbo. Things were going to run like a tight ship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at his name. A dude named Jimbo, you know it's not going to be nothing nice, you know? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but then you got the guys under him named Tricky, who even mo- – oh, man. Oh, God. Bro. Hey. Uh-huh. Oh, Tricky. Trick trick, but I, I was going to say, bro, I, and now that I'm older, I really do appreciate Tricky. I appreciate oh, he the coach he Wait, was. Hey, I appreciate – I almost shed a tear senior year. He was like – he said it in like a, a strong type of way to my – I'm going to love your skinny ass, man. <laughs> like, he said, I'm going to love him. And I love him. I'm going to miss your skinny ass, you know. Because I – it just – but our coaching staff was – it was a good – um, it was a good mixture of everything. We had hard. We had – um, Easy going. Uh, we had serene ones like Coach Dawsey. Yeah. You know, and it was just – it was good for you. Then you get Coach uh, Odell Hagens. You know, he he's so funny. Um, but he's, 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 we, we had a good mixture. Mm-hmm. They treat us like adults, though. Yeah, treat us like adults. Let's be the treat, treat us like adults. Like, be honest with you, a lot of us we was in class, we had class together. We was on camp. Like, we always did stuff together too. We were never soloed out. We were never yeah. a, a, alone. And and when we started winning, we respected the winning. You know what I'm saying? We didn't mm-hmm. win big one weekend and win by one point. No, we went. We were stacking everybody. Okay, if we're gonna win big, we're gonna win big next week. We're gonna win big this week. We're gonna win big this week. And they started to understand that we had the maturity to win big, understand what the win was, celebrate that win on on, on Saturday night, come back on Monday, and we finna go right back to the ground. And I think that's why we were capable of doing it in 12, playing great football in 12, won it in 13, and came back in 14 again with the same young guys that we had. They just wouldn't have the game experience for that, for, for, for playing in a Rose Bowl. If, if we had another year with Kenny and KB and, and, and it'd been, it would have been different. You know, oh, I think Oregon we just didn't got, have – Oregon would have got smacked. Yeah, they would have got smacked. They, we just didn't have the veteran leadership in that room that we – like, we didn't have enough of. We had Rashad, but we didn't have anybody else. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was – that was, know what I'm saying? But, the Telvins. Um, yeah, we did. We didn't. We did. We didn't have a Telvin that year. I mean, Jalen was the vocal point of our of our defense. And man, I mean, look at him now. Though it speaks volumes. Yeah, no, it does. Well, Kenny, I definitely I could literally talk this camp for hours, <laughs> but uh, there's so so many cool things that came out of it. But we definitely appreciate you coming on here again. I think what third time, third or fourth time now on here. Yeah. You might be the biggest alumni here on the show. Uh, but de- de- definitely thank you again for giving us the opportunity. I mean, that, that was really a surreal experience, experience to go through and being able to watch you guys talk and meet up and just have that raw kind of organic experience with y'all hugging and hanging out, man. That was, that was really cool to see. So definitely appreciate yeah. you giving us a chance to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Next time you get the whole spin of it. Yeah. Y- y'all don't have to go back to Tallahassee. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That, I know. That's what I'm gonna say. Next time, I think we have to all go out together. I'm gonna make sure Los Los was all talk. Jesse have, Los Jesse was all turkey, talk, saying he was gonna go out and we were gonna Whoa. we were gonna Whoa. have some fun. No, <laughs> no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Los is hey. Los is all cap. Hold on. Yeah. Hello. Last Look time I came out with y'all boys, somebody had a curfew. Oh, I, I didn't Justin. have one on Saturday night, though. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, get, I didn't get to drive down the day before and stay in the hotel the night before. It must have been Dustin. Down camp. He ain't said nothing yet. It must have been Dustin. He ain't said nothing yet. Oh, Los is bringing up stuff. Uh, I said, I, I, said I, didn't have, I didn't have no curfew last weekend. I didn't no. hear from Los then, so. Oh. Don't, don't, don't oh, even, hey. Dustin. <laughs> don't even, Dustin. Hey, trust me. Me and Kenny had plenty good time. Hey, so, so all we're saying is we got to lock in for the next one. Uh, oh, we gonna lock in. We gonna lock in. Right. Make sure we do it up right. Make sure he off punishment. We're gonna put the cam- right. we're gonna put the phones and cameras away and just take an organic experience. Oh, Natural. is we? See, that's the best way. No way, I'm with it, Logan. You got the right idea. Keep the Hennessy right. away though. Keep the Hennessy. We shaking on that virtually. <laughs> 
Oh, man. Well, Kenny, appreciate you, man. Be good. We'll keep in contact. We definitely appreciate you coming on here, man. No problem, man. Be good. All right. Be nice to people. Hey, always will be. We'll try. <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, man. Have a good weekend. Yep. Let's see. So going on to the rest of this, I think we just have a few things to kind of note on. Recruiting, really. D. Lou, nothing, nothing too wild. I mean, Los, wait, you want to, let's save it till the end. You got some news that you want to share. Let's share it at the end. Right? Yeah, we can do that. I think that's I don't know it. if he's, he's doing it on podcast. No. I think he's doing it on the pod. Didn't we talk about it? Well, yeah. I was going to break it Monday because I get my papers Monday. Uh, well, this goes out tomorrow. This will go out cool. tomorrow. Cool. Screw it. I yeah. talk about Live it. right now, <laughs> isn't it? Doesn't matter. I, I already talked. I, I talked. I talked. I talked to a running back coach today. Coach Reed takes me like, "Hey, I heard the news from your agent, man. It's really sucks." I'm like, "Are you gonna float me until August?" <laughs> yeah. He's like, "No." Nah. I'm like, "I don't think that." Duh. So shut up. What are you talking about? Like, shut up. Like, I've been telling y'all this. Y'all sound stupid. Like, yeah. nobody's gonna know. If James Franklin, the starting quarterback, just retired, come on, dog. It's telling you something. Ain't nobody floating that long. Let's jump into some recruiting before we get to that. FSU loses uh, Cedric Baxter, decommits from FSU running back in the 2023 class. Seems like Florida State's still going to remain as a top school. Um, a lot of things are going to start changing now that some of these players get to go visit uh, the colleges in person. It's going to change a lot here. But Florida State's had like a roller coaster ride of recruiting lately, D. Lou. But uh, Cedric Baxter and also Nigel Kelly, kind of a little bit of a, a shocker. I know D. Lou was in text with a few of the uh, commits already in FSU's 2022 class, and they were shocked by it. But what's the latest this Baxter and Kelly decommitment situation? Yeah, just a couple notes because, you know, Cedric Baxter, he actually decommitted whenever we were doing the show um, last Thursday. But I actually got a chance to catch up with him for a couple minutes um, on Monday. And he told me the reason he backed off is he just wants to make sure he's making the right decision for himself. And FSU is still a top school for him. And um, like you said, Logan, he's going to be coming back to FSU later this summer to actually get to get a chance to meet with the coaching staff in person. So I really think for him, he's just kind of going through the process. And in the end, I could definitely see him winding back up as a member of the class. So we'll just have to see how it shakes out. And Kelly, yeah, that was the, the big shocker of the week. No one really expected that. I mean, I even did an, in an interview with him last week and I asked him about his commitment. And all he said was FSU is, is number one, but he's not really a talkative guy. So I didn't think much by it. And then he decommits earlier this week and I got a text from a source and they were just saying like, no one, no one was expecting it basically. And Travis and Sam McCall were a little mad that he reopened his uh, recruitment, but you know, he's a kid that he's seen his stock kind of explode this offseason. He's right on the cusp of being a top 100 player. He's going to have all the big schools after him, um, all the in-state schools in Florida. I think LSU is pretty heavy on him at the moment as well. So this is one where FSU is still in it, but it's going to be a battle to get him back into the fold, I think. Yeah, that Kelly one was definitely came to a shock. I mean, there was maybe some – conversation inside the discord a little bit about it maybe they kind of were maybe eventually down the road could expect it but at the timing of it so was it's their shocking. fault then can i give yeah. our boys some yeah. player perspective right here as a recruit former recruit um from my experience when you have a player decommit like that when he's a 2023 20, there's a lot of time you know what i'm saying um when i committed i committed early and i stayed committed for a while um, I kind of understood what I, where I wanted to go to school and the recruiting game has changed a lot. And now I'm sitting back and watching it. Like Kenny said, Kenny, um, is this too many avenues for kids to you know what I'm saying too many influences for kids. Like Instagram could be an influence. Just seeing a kid from across the country who's in your class, who has an offer that you have and y'all are high rated in y'all class. I mean, that meant make, you don't even know that kid. Like you're not even close to that kid just because like you share an offer and makes it entertaining or, or you entertain it period. So, there's there's a lot of people to influence kids nowadays. Not saying that he has a good good or bad one. Just saying that um, there's tons and tons of reasons why um, a kid would decommit this early to reopen his recruitment. Um, kids also are getting ready to be paid for their likeness. So probably kids want to see get sit back and watch 
what kid at what school and how they generate money for the next year. You never know, man. It's just so much stuff that a kid that young could decommit for. Um, but I hope him the best, man. I watched his film. He's a talented kid. He's a big kid for it for his age. Um, he's a great talent. I just, I, I really does hope he comes back and um, and recommits to Florida State, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, that 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 is sort of a, it's a huge loss and a huge loss of momentum. Um, and the other kid coming in that, in this twenty twenty two class is is no nobody expected that. When I seen the news, when we you know when we broke the news and I seen it, it was mm-hmm. it was shocking to me because.